you for joining us today and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers that are watching today. What a special day we can have together. We honor you and we love you and thank you for watching today. I trust that you will look at the bottom of your screen. There is a prayer number there, 217-423-2452. And that number's there for you to call. We want you to call us if you have a prayer request. We believe in prayer and God answers prayer. But you know what? We have to first ask what our need is to Him and He will answer, okay? And our prayer counselors, they love to pray for each and every request that we get. Okay, well, God bless. Let's go into the service. This is our God. He is amazing, is He not? Hallelujah. We worship Him this morning. I'm so glad that you are worshiping with us. And again, happy Mother's Day to all the uh, moms and to the women this morning for Women of God Day. Why don't you go ahead and turn and greet one another, hug a few necks, shake a few hands, and share some love this morning.
We're going to wait upon you this morning for the morning tithe offering. And um, just, be, hey, before we do that, though, I want to have all the mothers, all the grandmothers, and all the ladies 18 years of age and over stand, if you would. Could we have all grandmothers, mothers, and ladies 18 years of age and over? Would you please stand? Look at that. Can we give these ladies a great big hand? Come on. Amen. We appreciate you so very much. Come on, guys. We, we appreciate them. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Would anybody want to calculate the meals that have been fixed? How many loads of laundry have been done, huh? My gosh. My mother was a, was a wonderful mother, hard worker. And I was thinking about that today. And in fact, I posted a bunch of pictures I have had of my mom over the years. And, uh, you know, she graduated from uh, high school when she was 16, got her teacher's degree in those years, only two years up at ISU, taught school for over 50 years, raised five kids on a farm family, and uh, drove trucks and tractors and everything else that a farm wife has to do, and uh, and loved the Lord. I, I remember uh, when you were, grew up on the farm, your first jobs are bailing hay, walking beans, mowing, mowing lawns. That's what you did. That's how you made money. And um, I was so excited because Geneva Brighton had asked me to, to um, walk beans. I made 25 cents an hour walking beans. And I walked beans all week long. And I mean, I had, I had a pile of quarters, you know, that she, that she paid me. And my mom says, well, you know, Sunday's uh, coming up. And, Doug, you need to give 10% of that now to the Lord. And I thought, what doctrine is this? You know? And she says, no, you, you, give, you give your first tenth to the Lord, and you'll find that God will bless you. Hey, how many glad for leadership like that? I was probably all of 10 years old, and my mom taught me the principle of tithing all the way back there. And I want you to know it works, and it continues to work for those who will trust God and believe him. So we're going to bring our tithe into the house of the Lord here today. So if our ushers would get in place. Uh, let's let's give to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for the privilege that we have to know you and serve you. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you have been so good to us. You have blessed us in more ways than we can even recount. And as, Lord, it's out of thanksgiving, it's out of cheerfulness, it's out of joy, and also, Lord, some expectation and faith that we give to you today, knowing that what we put in your hands, God, uh, you always make something greater out of it than we can ever make with it. So take this and use it and multiply it back to your people, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, I think we have a couple of videos about some things that are going to be happening real quick. My journey through grief was certainly much more difficult than what I ever imagined. There were times that I just could not concentrate on things. There's days I wake up and I don't want to do anything anything. It's just devastating. The grief that happens after the death of a loved one can leave you feeling confused, lost, and alone without a roadmap. But other people have traveled this grief journey before you, and there is hope and a way forward. Grief Share is a proven video-based support group that connects you with others who are traveling the grief journey you're on right now. Grief Share is a place where you can be as raw and as ugly as you want to be, and it's okay. I joined them online and it was great. It was wonderful. Each weekly Grief Share session consists of an insightful video with grief experts and testimonials, a small group discussion, and encouraging workbook exercises. You'll also receive free online resources and tools that help you move forward in hope and healing. I gained so much more than just understanding of grief. And I think I saw it from a bigger picture, too. Anyhow, it's going to be a great, great time. And I tell you what, we're, we are praying for, believing for, a global outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the days we're living in, right? How many believing for that? We are. And uh, we're not going to back down from that. We're going to keep pressing ahead. That's what our Wednesday night 120 fellowship is all about. We pray for an increase of the anointing and the presence of God. We're praying for revival for our nation. 
Our nation needs revival. Come on, church. Don't go to sleep on me. We, we need, and who's going to pray it in unless we pray it in, right? Last Wednesday night, we had an amazing prayer, a prayer time. God was here. I think we had 112 people. 120 is our, is our goal. That's our minimum goal. We'd like to have 120 people come out every Wednesday night and pray and seek the face of God. And so why don't you be one of those? It's a one-hour prayer meeting, and uh, we ought to be able to just set that aside and say, God, we're going to sanctify that time to come and pray for a move of God for our nation. And you know, God's answering our prayer. A revival broke out in the University of Tennessee last week, and hundreds of young people in college got baptized. Last week in Tennessee, University of Tennessee. And you know, you say these things and people go like, well, really? Yeah, really. You can check it out. It's happening. And God is really visiting the Gen Z and the millennial uh, generation, and some amazing things are happening. But I believe that is in response to the prayer of the church. So let's keep on praying, and our prayers will help fuel that fire for revival. And so we want to invite you out every Wednesday night to 120 Fellowship, and then we want you to be praying. In fact, um, the evangelist, Sean, was asking that on Friday of that week, if you could take part of that day and fast and pray for that weekend. And uh, let's believe God for healings. Let's believe for God to baptize people in the Holy Spirit, uh, for God just to re renew and revitalize the church. But uh, So you pray about that and what God would have you to do. Well, it is my privilege to introduce to you today this lovely speaker, um, my, my wife, my lovely wife of almost 55 years, Rosemary Lowry, and she is qualified to speak on Mother's Day and to women uh, for all the years that she has been a leader in our home and a leader in the church. We started out in ministry when we were 16, holding meetings together, and uh, she has been not only a life partner but a prayer partner uh, to me and uh, raised our children. All of our kids know the Lord. All of our grandkids know the Lord, and a lot of that credit goes to you, Rosemary. Thank you. So God bless you as you come and share the word with you. Welcome to Pastor Rosemary Lowry. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to let you know that, yes, we started at age 16, but my mother or my grandmother went with us to every ministry place that we were at, okay? We were chaperoned, okay? And that's a life principle that should be, <laughs> okay? Well, listen, before I start, I have a song that I want to be played for you. And I just want you to worship him, close your eyes, worship him, and listen to the words of this song, okay? Jehovah is in the house And his presence here among us Drives the strong man out When the Holy One of Israel Shines favor in this place Every fear and every failure fall subject to His grace when Jehovah is in the house. Jehovah is in the house. Jehovah is in the house and his presence here among us drives the strong man out when the holy one of israel shines favor in this place every fear and every to his grace when Jehovah is in the house Jehovah is in the house in an upper 
room They waited Until the spirit came According to the promise That the Son of God had made Every tongue and every nation They all bore witness on that day That the Holy Ghost of Heaven Was sent to them to save Amen. I love that song. I play that song every day in my car, and then I rewind it, and I play it again and again and again, because Jehovah is not only in this house, but he's in your house. He's in your car. Wherever you are, born-again believer, Jehovah is in the house, and I love that song. And confirmation today, praise team, you sang about Jehovah, and I would like to ask you at the end of the service, sing that again, okay? And, you know, us preachers, sometimes we need confirmation, you know, because, you know, we want to do what the Lord wants us to do. So thank you for leading the congregation in that. Well, I'm thankful to share today. Uh, We have a gift for each woman, age 18 and over, and at the end of the service, you will have that gift, okay? Three of our brothers in the Lord be standing one, two, three. So don't leave women of God. 18 and over, you have a gift today. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, that we can honor you, Jesus, and honor the women of God today. I just pray that you'll anoint the words that are said today, and we'll give you all the praise in your name. Amen. Well, I believe I have a special message for everyone. You know, I always say men and women, children, youth, youth, listen to the word Because it's not just for mothers, it's not just for the women. I believe God's words for everybody, so I want to share. And I believe today I have a life principle to share with you. And uh, one time, Pastor Doug wrote about life principles. But I feel I have a life principle today for everyone, and that is to leave a life legacy. You know, maybe it's because of my age. Maybe it's because of the ages of my children, ages of my grandchildren, ages of my three grand, great-grandchildren. Whew, I got a lot of family and have another great-grandchild on the way due in November. But maybe it's because of that that I seem to be thinking more and more about leaving a life legacy. We don't know when our days here are going to end. You know, I always tell Pastor Doug, I said, I've had my three score and ten. So every day is a blessing, 
And I even tell him that when I eat ice cream and everything else I want to eat, I said, you know what? God's got it all in control. So we each have a given time, a fixed amount of time on earth. Sometimes people have more time than others, but I just want us to leave a life legacy. Everybody in this room will leave a life legacy. I would like to ask Mark to put the first picture on the screen that I gave him today. Thank you. Um, this is the only picture, only picture there is of my father, my mother, and me. And that is because at age of six weeks, my father was in the reserves. Reserves were called back to Korea. He had to leave. So that's the only picture we have. And then the picture of my father, Bobby Davis, he died in the Korean War at age 23. But you know what he did? He left me a life legacy written in a letter to my mother. I have that letter, and I'm just going to read a portion. On the boat, he said, there were seven of us. We had a prayer meeting. They were all Protestants but me. He was a Catholic boy. One was a Baptist preacher. We talked about how a person should be saved and different parts of the scripture. Guess you would call it the plan of salvation. I like chapter John 3.16. There is some wonderful something over us in the Bible. He says, I don't mind going into combat so much because I feel sure God is on my side. Mary, that's my mother's name. I know I have been saved. So I have that written in, my, in a letter from my father. Whew. Though I, know, I never met him here. I never felt him holding me. But I know that I know that I know I will see him in heaven one day. And I'm thankful for that Baptist boy that was in that prayer group because he led my father to the Lord. And he says, I know I am saved. So I have that legacy that he left to me. Um, in another letter, <laughs> I don't have that one, but my mom's told me all about it, said that he wrote a letter to her and said, Mary, I want you to buy a piano. I want Rosemary to take piano lessons. Well, guess what? I was four years old. She bought a piano, started taking piano lessons. But because he was killed in Korea, he never saw me play the piano. He never saw the legacy of that piano. But you know what? It's gone down from generation to generation. Starting with me, two of our children play the piano. I believe 10 or 11 of our grandchildren play the piano. And uh, if Jesus tarries, I believe others in the family will be playing the piano. But a legacy is something that we can leave to others. My father left me that piano. And uh, guess what? That piano is still in existence. It lives in, in uh, Arkansas right now with Becky, and she'll send me pictures of the piano and the girls playing the piano. So anyway, that legacy has gone from generation to generation. And even though my father never got to see it, it's happened. And I'm just excited about that. So we can have a legacy that can last. You know, and that piano is 70 years old. So now you know how old I am. Anyway, my mother bought it for me, and I'm thankful for that gift that my father wanted me to have, and it's gone down. Well, you know, when we think of legacy, we think about, oh, we're going to leave some money to somebody, our family. We're going to leave something to our family. But I believe that we, you and I, should leave a life legacy, not just money, not just like a piano, but I believe we can give a life legacy story, our life story. We can give lessons that we've learned. Our children have learned <laughs> lessons from what Pastor Doug and I have gone through in our almost 55 years. We can give a legacy of what our hopes and our dreams are. We can give a legacy of where and when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. June 19th, 1960, Lincoln, Illinois. Sister Douglas, my Sunday school teacher was at the altar with me. I'll never forget it. That's a legacy that I will never forget. 
And like I said, I believe those stories, life story, lessons we've learned, that is life. That is a life legacy. And I believe you and I should, could um, and should show our loved ones what the Lord has done for us. Young people all over this building, you too, you're not too young to leave a life legacy. You will be leaving a life legacy at your school, your jobs, wherever you are, you will leave a life legacy. And so I just pray that you'll listen to the words of this sermon. I was thinking about a great example of a life legacy. That was Justin Cawthon. He left a life legacy for his school. When he was here working for us, he left a life legacy here. So I just pray that for each and every one of us, me included, that we will leave a life legacy. Very quickly, I'd like to think of some life legacies that we can leave to the next generation. The very first life legacy I believe we can leave is faith. Have faith in God. We walk by faith, not by sight. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we live by faith, not by sight. And I believe many of you could probably share where you had to live by faith because it didn't look like it was going to be all right. But you just kept trucking, walking for Jesus. Christians should not rely on our own understanding. We should trust God, right? We should trust God. Um, there's another scripture that I found after I gave them the notes, but um, it's on this. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Pastor Doug's favorite. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. Just know that he has it all in control, right? And Hebrews eleven six, 6, I believe that's on there. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I love that scripture, 11.6. It pleases God when we draw near to him. But we, don't, we won't have faith if we don't draw near to him. We have to draw near to him. Have faith in God. Matthew 17.20 says, Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed. Move from here, and there it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you if you have faith in God. Walk by faith, not by sight. So let's leave a legacy, a life legacy of walking by faith. One thing I remember is uh, when we were pastoring in West Point, we never knew what was going to come in week to week for our check to live by. And so it was just the way the church did it then. And so I told my husband, I said, we're going to have to have mailbox miracles then. Because here we are, we have two children, we've got to have mailbox miracles. But I didn't know my Becky was eavesdropping on us. But I found out later because when she and Phil... And her kids were going through something. She said, Mom, I just told Phil, we need a mailbox miracle. I didn't know she was hearing that. But that carried on into the next generation to have a mailbox miracle. I still believe in mailbox miracles. So I trust if you need a miracle, look in that mailbox. There might be one there. But in all these scriptures they gave you today, faith is the key. Have faith in God. He will never never fail you. He, you know, we can't do everything in our strength alone. We have to have the Lord. So leave a legacy of faith. Second, leave a legacy of obedience. Hmm. Obedience to God's commands is the true sign that we love God. When we love God, we will want to obey his word. Genesis twenty two eighteen says, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you obeyed me. So obey the Lord. Obey his word because your descendants are again looking to you. And if they see you obeying God, it won't be hard for them to obey God. 
First King chapter 2, verse 3 says, And keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and his testimonies. And it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. You know what? Obedience will bring prosperity. That doesn't mean it's going to bring you lots of money, you know, or things, you know. I, I like to have enough money to meet the needs. I like to have things sometimes. But you know what? The greatest prosperity we can have is a prosperity of joy and peace in our life. I love the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's your strength. And I really believe the joy and um, peace in the Lord is very prosperous. Now, children and youth, I quoted this to my kids a lot. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on earth. Honor your parents. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. And I believe that still today. For my mother, I called my mother this morning. I wanted to wish her a happy Mother's Day. I want to honor my mother. And I tell, of course, I use that on my kids. I said, now, if you want to live a long life, you better honor yeah, I kind of used it to, to, for me. But it's a true scripture. If you will honor and obey, you will have a long life. Romans 13, 1 says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Sometimes we don't want to obey authority. But, you know, God says to obey the authority that he has established. He's governed the law so that you and I can live in a free country, you know. Christians are called to obey their leaders, pay taxes, woo, and abide by the laws and respect. So that's part of leaving a life legacy is doing what's right and, and honoring those that are in authority. Well, the third life legacy is... Uh, leaving a legacy of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus had no sin, but he died on the cross for you and me so that we could receive righteousness. And I believe righteousness is the quality of being right in the eyes of God. We can be righteous in him. No righteousness in me is in Jesus, my Savior. And I believe righteousness includes our character, who we are. I believe it's our attitude. That's another thing I'd say to my kids. Attitude check. You need an attitude check. And then, there, of course, I've had to look in the mirror and say that to me too. Okay? Attitude check. And I believe... Um, Righteousness with our conscience, our conduct, which would be our actions, what we do, and our word. Our word should be words of truth, you know, and we should be righteous. Righteousness is based upon God's standard because he's the ultimate lawgiver and he's the ultimate one who obeyed. Amen. Righteousness is therefore based upon God's standard. Because he's the lawgiver. And this word gives us what he wants us to do, to be righteous. Amen? I saw this on Facebook this week, and I thought I'd quote it to you. It said, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from all. Okay, so just because we want to be righteous in Jesus doesn't mean we're not going to have trouble. But it does mean that he will deliver us from all. So let's have that life legacy of uh, righteousness. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, I like this one. Live the legacy of generosity. 
I love that. Hebrews 13, 16 says, and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. If the Holy Spirit nudges you to do something for somebody, whether it's a check to give to somebody or something material to give somebody, the Lord has done that so many times in our lives. I can tell you one thing. Um, the church we were at in, uh, in uh, Springfield, Missouri, when we went when we were in college, they decided to take up a grocery shower, but they didn't say who it was for. So I went back to our trailer, and I got a sack, and I put some groceries in it. And remember, we were God-believing <laughs> um, students that needed some money ourselves and maybe some groceries ourselves. But the pastor asked, said, we're going to give a grocery shower. Didn't say who. So that Sunday night at church, you know, he asked everybody to bring their groceries down. So we did. And guess what? He announced, this grocery shower is for Doug and Rosemary Lowry. We got to take all those groceries home. But you know what? When we're generous, he'll be generous to you. So give to the Lord. You may not understand what's going to happen or why, but just obey the Lord. And let's leave a life legacy of generosity. Our goodness really should imitate the character of God. He's good, isn't he? Doing good and sharing others with others, I believe, is a form of worship. We sometimes think just worship is just singing to the Lord or praying to the Lord. But you know what? Giving is a form of worship too. Our actions please him, okay? Fifth, leave a life legacy of integrity. Woo. In the day we're living in now, you just wonder, where's your integrity? And not just People who don't know the Lord, but even people who know the Lord. Where is our integrity? We represent Jesus, and we have to walk in integrity. Proverbs 10, 9 says, The man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. Whew, what a powerful scripture. The man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes the wrong path will be found out. And I think that's, you know, and none of us are excluded from that. We have to all walk in integrity, every one of us. Have, having integrity means that you live in accordance to the deepest values. Be honest with everyone. Speak truth. Always keep your word. You know, integrity, I believe, is a highly valued trait. Integrity means being honest. Speak truth. And just say I'm sorry. I believe that when we walk in integrity, we can say, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Can you forgive me? So everybody, let's live in the life of integrity. Our words and our actions should be truth, should be honest, and our life should represent Jesus. Amen. Six, leave a life legacy of victory. Once again, praise team, thank you for that course about victory, because that's a life legacy, to walk in victory. 1 Samuel chapter 14, God used one man and his helper. That would be Jonathan, and then the helper was the man who um, bore Jonathan's armor. Well, they were tired of sitting around the camp, listening to everybody complain about how bad everything was. And they refused to believe that they were powerless because they knew that they served a living God. And they went out to defeat the enemy. Just them. They defeated the Philistines, okay? Through their faith and their obedience, they brought a great victory. Now, that's just a snapshot view of that chapter. If you want to know all the details, go to 1 Samuel chapter 14. But listen, it's a great example of living in victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 says, But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can have victory. I don't care what you're walking in. 
If you obey the Lord, if you serve the Lord, you're going to have victory in your life. I believe it. I do. Seventh is leave a life legacy of encouragement. We all need encouragement, don't we? First Thessalonians 5.11 says, therefore, encourage one another. Build up one another, just as you are doing. So family of God, let's encourage each other. If you see somebody going through something, go to them, pray with them, encourage them. I saw what happened at the altar today. Encouragement. So I want you to live a life legacy of encouraging. And young people, you can do the same thing. I, you know, I know when I was young, I thought, oh, that's just for the older folk. But you know what? It's not. God's word is for all of us who love him and who serve him. There are times in all of our lives where we feel frightened. We feel distressed about our future. Hmm. But guess what? He has it all in control. Other scriptures are Hebrews 3.13. And evidently, he must knew we needed to be encouraged, or he wouldn't have these scriptures in the word. Hebrews 3.13 says, where we are told to encourage each other daily. And you know what? That's in our homes, too. I believe it should start in our homes. Encourage each other. Encourage our children. You can make it. You can do it. You're living for Jesus, and you're doing what Jesus says. You can do it. So let's encourage. Proverbs 12, 25 says, Anxiety in a person's heart weighs it down, but a good word cheers it up. So sometimes we walk in here, even have an anxiety in our heart. But you know what? When we receive a good word, that encourages us and cheers us up. We don't have to come We can come in one way, but we can make the decision to leave another way. We can be encouraged by the word of God and by our brothers and sisters in the Lord. So I want to encourage you to leave with a legacy of encouragement. I believe, I love this scripture, I believe the greatest encouragement is found in Joshua 1.9. It says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wow, that's all I need right there. If the Lord knows where I am and he wants me to be strong and courageous in what I'm walking through, I can remember and always know that he will never leave us. He is always with us. So, family of God, let's be an encourager today. Let's leave a life legacy of encouragement. Leave a life legacy of nourishment. Hmm. Joshua 6.35 says, the Savior himself said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He is the bread of life. The word of God is the bread of life. Our spiritual nourishment, and that's what we need, spiritual nourishment, is praying every day. Start the day off praying. Praying together with those in your home. Studying the scriptures. That's spiritual nourishment. Attending church services. Bible study groups. And singing. Don't forget to sing. I love, if I'm not playing higher ground in the car, then I'm singing. Pastor Doug sings in the car. Just sing. Don't forget to sing choruses. That will, in, that will feed your soul. And then don't forget to sing even the hymns. There are so many hymns in the hymn book. What a friend we have in Jesus. So many hymns that we can use for nourishment in our body. And this sustains our soul, I believe, through life's seasons. And we all have life seasons. I love this scripture in Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. I think I forgot to tell you that's a life of uh, endurance. Okay, sorry about that. But Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Have you ever found that? But let us run with endurance. Let us keep running the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So let's leave a life legacy of endurance. If Jesus can endure that cross for you and for me, then he will give us the strength to endure whatever comes our way. Consider him who endured from sinners hostility. Oh, let's see. Have we ever had to endure hostility at our job? Well, let me tell you, I was, you know, I was that girl in my high school in Atlanta, Illinois. That girl who never went to dances. That girl who always went to church. I was that girl. And so I had to endure it because I wanted everybody to like me. And you know what? They did. But they just didn't want to date me, have me over to parties. But you know what? That's okay. You know what's happened? On Facebook, I see where some of my classmates have given their heart to the Lord. Maybe it's because I endured, but I believe it's because the Lord loves them as much as he loved me, and somehow he brought across their path someone to lead them to Jesus. So young people, older people, all of us, let's endure. Let's endure. Let's don't give up. Uh, our friend Vicki Jameson, <laughs> that's what she said to us on TV one day. She says, because Winston Churchill, I believe, said it, never give up. So that's three words for you today. Never give up. Endure. Keep walking. Keep talking for Jesus, okay? Well, two more, and I'll be done. Leave a life legacy of sincerity. Let's be sincere. Titus 2.7, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. That word's in your Bible, to be sincere, sincerity. Romans 12.9 says, love must be sincere. Don't forget that. In all of our relationships, love must be sincere. To you that verse, it says, hate what is evil. Cling to what is good, okay? So love must be sincere. Sincerity is the quality of fr being free from uh, pretense. Let's don't pretend. Let's be real. Let's love Jesus. Let's love others. It, um, we're free from deceit. Let's don't be deceitful. And then let's don't be a hypocrite. Let's just don't say one thing and do another thing, okay? Let's live and be sincere for Jesus. Let's live our life with sincere. Um, another thing that means we don't gossip. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun, but we shouldn't do it. Where did you get that whistle? gave him that whistle today. <sighs> Paybacks are wonderful, aren't they, Pastor Doug? Yeah. Oh, but I might have the last word. And I'll be sincere about it. <sighs> well, I wasn't expecting that. I thought about doing it to him several times, but I always forgot my whistle. <sighs> Who reminded him to bring a whistle? Okay. Back on track. Let's be sincere. Okay. Love must be sincere. I think you just want me to get done, aren't you? That's why you blew the whistle. Time out or something? Okay. The last one. Leave a life legacy of serving. 1 Peter 4, 10, and 11 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God, grace in its various forms, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. So, family of God, whatever your age is, let's serve one another. Serving is another form of worship. Uh, Mark 10, 45 says, 
For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for you and for me, for many. Not just for you and for me, but for everybody. That's why we have to serve others. Even if they don't know Jesus, but they're your neighbor, and you feel like you're supposed to do something for them, do it. Because that's the Holy Spirit prompting you to do that. Jesus became a servant to all. And now you and I get to share that example and shine Jesus Christ by being a servant to others. The Bible calls on us to be an example of Jesus Christ. He was the great example. Okay, serving is the example. I just really believe, you know, we have so many servants here. When, you know, the ushers are servants. Uh, the greeters are servants. But you know what? Just being there for other people, you're being a servant to them. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells you that that brother or that sister in the Lord needs, you can serve them, okay? I'm so thankful for that. The calling remains constant, even if the ways we serve change. You might not always serve in the same way. The Lord may change it. But you know what? Be obedient to that. Be willing to change. But always, always be a servant. Well, I believe in closing, all of these life legacies are a way of life. If you take the first letter of each life legacy we talked about, it spells out one word. That is forgiveness. Go back and check it out. He wants us to live a life of forgiveness. Have a life of legacy of forgiveness. I just believe that's so important. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. As God, Christ, forgave you. So let us leave a legacy that we walk in forgiveness. Let your loved ones see you walk in forgiveness. Let those that you work with, let, you, let them see that you walk in forgiveness. I believe we must walk in forgiveness because I am so thankful that the Lord forgave me. I was a sinner, but now I'm saved. Amen. So maybe you're here today and you're wondering what your life legacy is. Well, most of all, I trust that you, each and every one, have the first life legacy, and that is accepting Jesus as your personal Savior. Can we have our heads bowed, please, and our eyes closed? I believe he wants you to have a life legacy that follows all of these characteristics, but most of all, and why he died for you was so that you could have a life legacy of salvation that you can know that you know you are on your way to heaven. He died on the cross for you so that you could have eternal life in heaven. And as every head is bowed and eyes are closed, I want to ask each and every one of you, have you given your life to Jesus? If you haven't, would you please raise your hand because you can do that today. Today can be the first day of your new life legacy in Jesus. All right. Thank you. I would like to pray with all of those today. And uh, as I said, we have a gift for everybody. And Pastor Doug, if you'd make your way up here. I want to pray first of all. Lord, thank you for your abundant love. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Lord, I trust Everyone here knows you as their personal Savior. If they don't, that they can know that they can still ask you, wherever they are, to be their Savior. Help us to encourage them that you died on the cross. and You gave them the greatest gift of forgiveness. Thank you that because of you, we can leave a life legacy representing you. And we love you. Amen. All right, if we'll all stand and all the women age 18 and over.
will come down to the altar. Okay, and in a minute, I'm going to have you pray for us. But if all the women will come down, age 18 and over, I have a gift for you. And I will show you what it is. It's a little notebook. Because remember, my daddy wrote in a letter that he gave his heart to the Lord. And then he wrote in a letter by Rosemary a piano. Well, I want to encourage you to write your legacy in this book. And you'll probably need a bigger book because you've all got a great legacy. But I just wanted to get it started. And so um, you will be receiving that. I believe you can share your story. Share what you want. Well, they're all different, Pastor Doug. But this one says, pray about everything. Worry about nothing. Philippians 4, 6. So I think there's four different ones on the book, you know. So I don't know which book you'll get, but it'll be a word for you. Okay? But I want us to share our stories and share what the Lord has done for us. Okay? And I just love you all. I thank you for the legacy that you are leaving me. Do you know each and one of you leave a legacy for me? Being here every Sunday for church, you're leaving a legacy that God's important that you want to have fellowship with each other. Okay, Pastor Doug, I'm going to give it to you. Didn't she do great? Didn't she do great? Wow. <laughs> I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you solved the mystery for me because I thought, why would she have 11 points? And then it's the word forgiveness. Each of, the, those, each of those letters started one of those points. So, well, you have to walk in that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I know you have to walk in that for me. I knew that you would think that was a long sermon, but I had a reason at the end, okay? No, it was good. It was good. Amen. Best sermon I heard today. Best one. And I heard Jensen Franklin. I think he did better. Amen. Well, we want to pray over all, all of you ladies. We thank God so much for you and for your ministry. And um, we could not even imagine the church without the women of God. Couldn't even imagine it. Uh, many times you're the heavy lifters. Uh, us guys, we need, to, we need to catch up because of uh, you've been carrying the load for your family, carrying the load for the church. We thank God for every, every one of you. And uh, we know that you have, um, you know, um, certain battles that, that men don't fight. We understand that. And uh, But we want to pray that God just blesses every home and every person here today and that you come in the fulfillment of all that God has for you, whatever season you're in, right? And so we're going to pray that over you. Heavenly Father, thank you for each of these ladies, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the giftings and the callings, the talents that you have deposited in them, Lord. And, uh, and Father, the legacy they all are leaving with their family, Lord, as their family watches their life and watches how they how they go through life, how they face their problems, their prayer life, their praise life, their servant's life, all these things, Lord, they are leaving behind that legacy that's going to guide the next generation. So, Father, we pray that you'll bless them and help them and strengthen them, be to them everything they need you to be. And, Father, we'll give you all the praise and the glory. But, Father, we thank you. You're the God of abundance. So, Lord, abundantly pour out blessing upon every life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, let's give the Lord a big praise offering. And as you're getting your gift, the praise team's going to sing about Jehovah. Okay? God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Well, I preached the sermon today, so I trust that you receive something from God's Word that you and I will apply to our life. You are a woman of legacy, so I trust that you will leave a legacy trusting Jesus, knowing Jesus. I trust that you know Him, first of all, as your personal Savior. If you don't, you can do that today. Start a new legacy. All you have to do is pray, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Help me to start a new life in you. Amen. And He will, okay? Well, God bless you. Till we see you next week, Maranatha. 
We want to thank you for joining us today for Maranatha. Remember, a warm welcome always awaits you at Maranatha Assembly of God Indicator. If we can help in any way, please don't hesitate to call or write. Until next week, here is wishing you God's best on behalf of the Maranatha family. People say